Okay, so let's start with a simple example of simple harmonic motion. And, um, well, the most famous example is a mass on a spring. And we're going to look at a particular type of mass on a spring. Imagine a spring which obeys Hooke's law, most springs do, but it obeys Hooke's law if it's extended and if it's compressed. So it's a bit of an unusual type of spring, you do get them. And so in other words, if you pull it, it obeys Hooke's law, but if you push it and, and compress it, then it also obeys Hooke's law. Well, Hooke's law, we better write that down because we know all about Hooke's law. Well, Hooke's law says delta F equals K delta X, or there are many ways of writing it, uh, which basically means the force applied is proportional to the extension. Um, well, let's have a look at our, uh, this situation that we're going to consider, because we're going to look at one of these springs oscillating horizontally and on a smooth surface. So in other words, there's no friction involved that's going to make our mathematics nice and easy, no friction. So here's an object and it's attached by a spring to one of these springs to uh, a wall and therefore it can just oscillate backwards and forwards. Well if before we start oscillating it let's imagine we just let leave it at rest in the middle of its position and so we can define therefore the, a place where it would if we just left it and let it be where it wanted to be without oscillating so that it wasn't compressed and wasn't extended well we could say that that was its equilibrium position and because it's in equilibrium it's, it's uh, there's no resultant force on it well we now need to define something called displacement if I extend it then what I'm really going to do is I'm going to pull it out here so we're going to say that if I put it to the right, we're going to call that a positive displacement. And if I compress it, we're going to call that a negative displacement. Now we can choose which way around we do that. But for this example, it would be really useful to do it that way. It's also going to be really useful to write down Hooke's law in a slightly different form. So instead of putting F equals Kx, we're going to write it as F equals minus Kx. And so, in other words, um, the, our extension we're going to write as just x, and the stiffness of the spring, or the constant we're going to call k, but notice we've got a minus in there. Well, this just makes it mathematically precise, because this will tell us not just the magnitude of the force, which would, we would get from this top equation, but it also is going to tell us the direction of the force. Because we've decided that the displacement is a vector, then it's either going to be positive or negative. And I think it's fairly clear that if we pull it, say, for example, to the right, we can see um, that it's going to experience a force to the left. Let's just look more closely. So there's my block or whatever it is, or body, and I've pulled it out to a positive displacement. So here's my spring, as before, now stretched out a bit. Now, of course, the equilibrium position is still in the same place as it was before. That's just where it wants to be. But we do now have a displacement. So let's draw on our displacement here. Well, our displacement is from where the centre of the block was to where the centre of the block is. So it's that distance there. So let's call it plus D. We've extended it by a distance plus D. And well, it's fairly clear that the force that's going, is going to be pull it back, pulling it back in the other direction. So the force at this moment is going to want to get it saying, hey, I don't want to be stretched. I want to be back, pulling back towards the equilibrium position here. And now we can see why that minus sign is important. If we actually apply our version of Hooke's law here to uh, this situation, well, we would write the following. We would say, well, the force acting on the body is equal to minus times the spring constant of the spring uh, times the displacement d. And, well, that's a negative value, which means that the force is pointing in the negative direction or to the left. So it kind of helps us decide the direction of the force. Well, let's... For completeness, then, we better look what happens if we compress our, our body, uh, our, stream, our spring, 
and push it the other way. Well, here's our block again. This time we've compressed the spring. So we've still got the same equilibrium position, of course. That's the central position of zero displacement. And now we've kind of compressed our spring here. So, well, what's our displacement now? Well, we can see that it's a negative displacement. Our set, the center of our block. And let's suppose we have compressed it by a distance d. So our extension is minus d. Well, it's pretty obvious as before that the force is going to say, hey, I want to be going the other way now because I don't want to be compressed. And, and let's see if our Hooke's law works this time. Well, if we say f equals minus kx again, well, this time then we've got minus k, but our extension is minus d. And of course, minus times a minus gives us a plus. So we actually get plus k d, which means that the force is to the right because it's a positive direction. So in this way, that minus is quite important uh, when we're dealing with oscillations and enables us to see exactly what's going on with how the force relates to the extension. Well, this type of spring that obeys Hooke's law does cause an oscillation which of this special form that we're calling simple harmonic motion. Well, more about the mathematics of that later, but we all recognise what that kind of motion looks like. We can just, you can also imagine a vertical spring oscillating. The mathematics are slightly different. And um, this equation here, our equation, we wrote down Hooke's law. Well, that turns out to be generally true for simple harmonic motion, where it, instead of k being the spring constant, it's just any constant. So I'm going to rewrite that as f equals minus k, and I'm just going to change how I write k a little bit so we don't get too confused. Well, this turns out to be a general equation for simple harmonic motion. And in other words, if in a situation <clears throat> the force is equal to minus some constant times the displacement, then that body will perform simple harmonic motion. In this case, it's the spring constant because we've got a spring, but obeys Hooke's law. But it could be any constant we like. And uh, so you could have all sorts of situations um, which are cause something to oscillate in simple harmonic motion. So in the next section, we'll just look at a few more situations of those, uh, where K is something different.